Hello and welcome to the fourth video in a series on simple regression. In this video we'll be taking the ice cream sales data and uh, at a particular value of temperature we'll make a point prediction and a prediction interval. Again we're using the simple regression case where we only have one predictor variable, in this case temperature, and our response is sales in hundreds of dollars. So I'll uh, run a regression first. Data, data analysis, regression, input range, sales, for x is temperature, labels in the first row. Let's have the output shown right here. And we won't do anything with residual analysis. Press OK. And here's our output as usual. Again, I'll do a quick clean of this output. I'm formatting all the non-whole numbers to three decimal places. I abbreviate a few of the uh, labels, statistic labels, so that they are not hidden. This is a duplicate part of the output, and uh, okay. And remember, Excel does not show us the equation, the regression equation, so we can get it from taking these two uh, cells right here. So the regression equation is sales hat is equal to negative 8.431 plus 0.433 times temp. Okay, but the main idea of this video is to uh, predict the sales at a particular uh, temperature value. So imagine, for example, that maybe tomorrow the forecast is uh, expected to yield a high temperature of 70 degrees. So given that, what would we predict our ice cream sales to be? So we'll answer that question with both a point prediction and a 95% prediction interval, for example. Okay, so what I, uh, Excel does not have a routine for making a prediction interval for you or even a point prediction, so you have to uh, type formulas in. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a little situation here starting in row 27. I'll say this is my desired uh, prediction level. Let's start with that. I'll stretch out this column just a little more. And let's say 90% uh, or 0 0.90, and I'll format that to percent form. Let's center it. Well, that means our alpha is going to be one minus that, so one, I say equal one minus, grabbing that number and it gives me 10%. Okay, so that's the same alpha that we use as a significance level in a hypothesis test. Okay, right below that, let's say I want a prediction at temp, and this is going to be where I put my value of 70, okay? But my value, my y hat, or my uh, sales hat prediction, is going to be a point prediction. Let me put a border under here. So I can do this now. I'll get my point prediction. That has nothing to do with this uh, significance level at this point. I'll say equal the intercept plus the slope times my input at of 70, which is in cell F31. And there's my point prediction. And let's format that to two decimal places. Okay. Um, I'll blow this screen up a little bit so we can see a little bit more clearly what's going on. The next thing I want to do is uh, calculate my standard error of prediction so that I can assess how reliable this point prediction is. So to do that, I'm going to make some more columns here. 
this next column will be a t-value. So to get a 90% confident or prediction interval, for example, I'll have to find the t-value that goes along with that. And then the next part will be my standard error of prediction. Tells me how variable my point prediction is. Uh, this part will be the margin of error. And I'll need a lower bound for my prediction interval and also an upper bound. And let's also calculate an interval width. Okay, so I'm going to have to find all these values. Uh, so the t value first is, uh, I can look up the t value. Well, let me first show you the formula that, that we're looking for. So I want to find the standard error prediction. I'll just paste that down here. This is what I'm looking for. I want to get that. So this is a complicated looking formula. My whole prediction interval formula by itself looks like this. So I'll just paste that off to the side here. So this formula says, once you find your point prediction, add and subtract a margin of error, which consists of a t-value plus, uh, sorry, a t-value times a standard error of prediction where this is how we calculate the standard error of prediction. So the t-value says, depending on alpha, split alpha, 1 minus that percentile from a t-distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So that's what I need to get next. This tells me essentially how many standard errors I need to go out under my t-distribution to have a 90% probability of getting my actual response in there. Okay, now I can look this up in a t-table. What I would need to look up is a, uh, for alpha 10%, I would have to look up the 95th percentile from a t-distribution with 18 degrees of freedom and minus 2. Okay, or in Excel, you can say equal TIMV and then grab the alpha and then grab the degrees of freedom and uh, Excel automatically splits the alpha in two when it's finding this value. Let's round that to three decimal places. Okay, standard error prediction. This is the hard one. So I'm going to type in a formula, grabbing information from the regression output, but I'm missing one aspect yet. I'm going to need the mean of my temperature variable and the standard deviation of my temperature variable. So I'm going to find that right now and just set it off to the side here a little bit. Okay, so the mean is the arithmetic average of temperature. And the standard deviation, STDEV, of temperature. Okay, and I'll format. Even though I formatted these to both one decimal place, uh, internally it's more accurate than that. Okay, I'm ready to find the standard error of prediction. So using this formula down here, it says take the standard error S, which is right there, multiply that by the square root of 1 plus 1 over your sample size plus your X input minus your X average, square that deviation, all divided by the standard deviation squared and N minus 1. Okay, so equal standard error times square root of 1 plus 1 divided by sample size plus input x minus average x square that deviation divided by the standard deviation squared and also divided by n minus 1. And that should do it. So there's my standard error prediction. Uh, as a check on the accuracy of your answer here, you should compare this to your standard error, and it should just be a little bit larger. So in this case, it is 2.414 to 2.325, just a little bit larger. Margin of error is equal to your t value times your standard error. 
that's the half, half the width of your interval. Then the lower bound is equal to the point prediction minus the margin of error. And the upper bound is equal to the point prediction plus the margin of error. And then your interval is equal to the upper bound minus the lower bound, the interval width. OK, let's format these to two decimal places. Actually, these could be two decimal places, too, I suppose. And then let's uh, shrink that. OK, so here's our answer. There's a 90% probability that if the high temperature tomorrow is 70 degrees, we will sell somewhere between $1,770 worth of ice cream and $2,607 worth of ice cream. Our best guess is $2,188. That's our point estimate. And uh, this is in the exact middle of this interval here. OK, just a quick side note. What if I want to have a higher probability of getting the actual ice cream sales in there? I can change that to 95%. Nothing happens to my point prediction, but you can see the interval got wider. If I change the value I'm predicting at, let's say it's expected to be 80 degrees, the point prediction changes, plus um, the interval changes. And in fact, the farther away this point prediction is from the mean of the temperature of the data we've collected, the wider the interval becomes according to this formula. Okay, that's it for prediction in the simple regression context.